Call the Red Canyon. You'll die. Oh. Die. Die. You took everything that I loved. brought you here. I wonder how you got in here. It is most rude to interrupt a moment of repose. Very rude indeed. Now come to me. I wish to have a look at you. seen the likes of you before. Who are you anyway? I see. Then you must have a name of sorts. Go on. Huh. I shall not ever grow accustomed to the sound of human names. You must possess a day of birth as well. Beneath which moon and on what day were you born to this world? never cease. It seems we share our day of birth. How strange. Hmm. It all feels so... familiar. I think it may be time for... yet another nap. <sighs> it is almost time to... begin.
Hey, time to wake up. Were you having that dream again? Massive armies clashing on a vast field, right? Oh, there hasn't been a battle like that in over three centuries. In any case, just put that out of your mind for now. The battlefield is no place for idle thoughts. Risking your life is part of the job for mercenaries like us. Letting your mind wander is a sure way to get yourself killed. Okay, time to get moving. Our next job is in the kingdom. I told you before, it's far from here, so we'll need to leave at dawn. Hmm? Oh, good grief. Everyone is already waiting for us outside. Gerald, sir, sorry to barge in, but your presence is needed. What's happened? Please forgive our intrusion. We wouldn't bother you with a situation not dire. What do a bunch of kids like you want at this hour? We're being pursued by a group of bandits. I can only hope that you will be so kind as to lend your support. Bandits? Here? It's true. They attacked us while we were at rest in our camp. We've been separated from our companions and we're outnumbered. They're after our lives, not to mention our gold. I'm impressed you're staying so calm considering the situation. I... Wait, that uniform... Bandits spotted just outside the village. Damn, there were a lot of them. I guess they followed you all the way here. We can't abandon this village now. Come on, let's move. Hope you're ready. Let's take care of those thieves before they overrun the village. Take down the enemies in front first. That should take the wind out of their sails. Yeah! It's not luck, it's fate. Now you know your limits. Is that all? Damn, why are there mercenaries in the village? Guess we'll have to deal with them too. Hey, you with the blank stare, out of my way. We must all do our part. What are you accomplishing with that little stunt? It's like you're trying to get me killed, you fool. <sighs> well, it's fine. After all, if you don't know the value of your own life, you're not going to protect it very well, are you? Of course not. <laughs> well then, I guess it's up to me to guide you from now on, right? You can call me Sothis. But I'm also known as... The Beginning. Hmm... Sothis. Yes, that is it. My name is Sothis. And I am also called... The Beginning. But... Who once called me that? I was not able to recall my name until just now. And just like that it came to me. How odd. That look upon your face. Did you think me a child? A mere child who forgot her own name? Phooey! That child just saved your life. And what does that make you? Oh. 
Correct. You understand. You threw yourself before an axe to save just one young girl. Yet all is well, as I have stalled the flow of time for now. You would have died had I not intervened. Hmm, I do not hear your gratitude. Perhaps I should force you to leave? There now, is gratitude so much to ask? I did deem you worth saving after all. Though it is only momentary, time has stopped. However did I manage that? When time begins again, the axe will tear into your flesh and you will surely meet your end. <sighs> How rude of you to drag me into this! Now what to do? Of course! I must turn back the hands of time! Yes, I do believe it can be done! You really are quite troublesome. I cannot wind back time too far, but all is well. You are aware of what's to come, which means you can protect yourself this time. Now go! Yes, you who bears the flames within. Drift through the flow of time to find the answers that you seek. Hey, did you just... The Knights of Seros are here! We'll cut you down for terrorizing our students! Hey, the thieves are running away! Go after them! The students seem to be unharmed. And... who's this? Ah. Uh... Why him? Captain Gerald? It is you! Goodness, it's been ages! Don't you recognize me? It's Alois, your old right-hand man! Well, that's how I always thought of myself anyway. Oh, it must have been 20 years ago that you went missing without a trace. I always knew you were still alive. You haven't changed a bit, Alois, just as loud as ever. And drop that captain nonsense. I'm not your captain anymore. These days, I'm just a wandering mercenary. One who has work to do. Uh, goodbye, old friend. Right. Goodbye, Captain. Wait, that isn't how this ends. I insist that you return to the monastery with me. Garig Mach Monastery. Uh, I suppose this was inevitable. And how about you, kid? Are you the captain's child? Is that so? Well, physical differences aside, your mannerisms do remind me of the captain. I'd love for you to see the monastery too. You will join me, won't you? <sighs> What's troubling you, captain? You aren't about to run off again, are you? Even I wouldn't dare run from the Knights of Saros. The Knights of Saros? They do seem rather skilled. Ah, oh, it seems your presence is required. Get going. I appreciate your help back there. Your skill is beyond question. You're clearly an experienced mercenary. And your father... That would be Gerald, the Bladebreaker, former captain of the Knights of Saros, oft praised as the strongest knight to ever live. Have I missed anything? How 
curious. I'd wager the explanation for that is fascinating indeed. Hey, you are coming with us to the monastery, right? <laughs> of course you are. I'd love to bend your ear as we travel. Oh, I should mention that the three of us are students of the Officers Academy at Garrig Mach Monastery. We were doing some training exercises when those bandits attacked. I definitely got the worst of it. That would be because you ran off. Too true. I was the first to make a strategic retreat. Everything would have worked out if these two hadn't followed me and ruined everything. Because of them, every single one of those bandits chased after us. Utterly ridiculous. Ah, so that's what you were thinking, Claude. And here I thought you were acting as a decoy for the sake of us all. His intentions were as clear as day. You will prove a lacking ruler if you cannot see the truth behind a person's words. <laughs> you will prove a lacking ruler yourself if you look for deceit behind every word and fail to trust those whom you rely on. Oh, joy. A royal debate between their highnesses. I wonder how being completely predictable affects one's ability to wield power. Personally, as the embodiment of distrust, I'd say your little exchange smacks of naivete. Me, naive. Tell me, are you actually incapable of keeping quiet, or is your lack of self-awareness a condition of some sort? In any case, forgive our digression. I must speak with you if you can spare a moment. The way you held your ground against the bandit's leader was captivating. You never lost control of the situation. It showed me I still have much to learn. Your skill is precisely why I must ask you to consider lending your services to the Empire. I might as well tell you now, I am no mere student. I am also the Adrestian Empire's... Halt, Edelgard. Please allow me to finish my own proposition. The Holy Kingdom of Fargus is in dire need of exceptional individuals like yourself. Please, do consider returning to the Kingdom with me. Whoa there, you two sure are hasty. Trying to recruit someone you just met. <laughs> Tactless, really. I was personally planning to develop a deep and lasting friendship on our journey back to the monastery before begging for favors. But it seems there's no time for niceties in this world. So, capable stranger, let's get right to it. Where does your allegiance lie? Hmm. It seems one's place of birth is quite significant to them. Yet they are so impressed by you that you may take your pick. Well... Is that right? Well, that's a win for the Alliance, so I suppose I'm obligated to be happy. All right, that's enough with the small talk. It's time to head back to the monastery. Looks like we'll have to pick this up another time. My, my, they are in such a hurry. You know, each of the three is most unique. Yes, I thought the same. Oh, I am so sleepy once again. Oh, I may be sleeping, but I... Part 1. White Clouds. Great Tree Moon. Three Houses. The icy winds of the Agma Mountains have begun to scatter, and the verdant fields once again spring to life across Fodlan, heralding the start of a new year. As they celebrate the dawning year, the people pray that they may realize their full potential, just as a tiny sprout hopes to one day grow into a great tree. The continent of Fodlan, said to be protected by a revered goddess, has existed since time immemorial. Three ruling powers now control the land. In the south lies a region long held by a more than 1,000-year-old dynasty, the Adrestian Empire. 
beyond its borders to the frigid north is the home of the holy kingdom of Fargus, ruled by the royal family and its knights. To the east, a league of nobles that heeds no king nor emperor rules what is called the Leicester Alliance. Once consumed by a tempest of war and turmoil, Fodland and these three mighty powers now exist in relative harmony. This will be your first time at the monastery. I'd be happy to show you around. It really is Fodlin in a nutshell. The good and the bad. Like it or not, we'll be there soon enough. There it is. Garrick Mock Monastery. It's been years since I've last set eyes on this place. To be forced to see her now, uh... You saw her in the courtyard earlier, didn't you? The Archbishop, Lady Rhea. As you know, the majority of folks in Fodlin are devout followers of the teachings of Seros. The leader of that ridiculously large religious organization is the Archbishop, Lady Rhea. Thank you for your patience, Gerald. My name is Setic. I am an advisor to the Archbishop. Right. Hello. It has been a long time, Gerald. I wonder, was it the will of the Goddess that we have another chance meeting like this? Forgive my silence all these years. Much has happened since we last spoke. So I see. The miracle of fatherhood has blessed you. That is your child, is it not? Yes. Born many years after I left this place, I wish I could introduce you to the mother of my child, but I'm afraid we lost her to illness. I see. My condolences. As for you, I heard of your valiant efforts from Alois. What is your name? A fine name indeed. From the bottom of my heart, I thank you for saving those students of the Officers' Academy. Hmm. Gerald, you already know what it is I wish to say, do you not? You want me to rejoin the Knights of Seros, don't you? I won't say no, but... Your apprehension stings. I had expected that Alois would have already asked this of you. I must step away for now, but I expect they will desire a word with you soon. Please listen carefully to what they have to say. Until tomorrow, farewell. Ah, I can't believe it. Forced back into the Knights of Seros. I'm sorry I dragged you into this. Looks like I'll be stuck here for a while. And I'm afraid your services are requested as well. Nothing like that. They want you to teach by the sound of it. You heard those brats earlier talking about the Officers' Academy. 
right? Well, the Academy just happens to be short a professor. And apparently that damned Aloise went and recommended you to Lady Rhea. So, you must be the new professor. My, how stern and handsome you are. Uh, no. <laughs> I'm not the one you're looking for. You can handle things from here. Good luck. And watch out for Lady Rhea. I don't know what she's thinking making you a professor like this. She may be up to something. Stay on your guard. Oh, it's you then? So young. Competence and age are not necessarily correlated, as you well know. I am Hanneman, a Crest Scholar and Professor at the Officer's Academy. I wonder if you bear a crest of your own. When next you have a moment to spare, I insist that you pay me a visit so we can delve into the subject further. I'm Manuela. I'm a professor, a physician, a songstress, and available. It's nice to meet you. <laughs> I look too pretty for that line of work, do I? But yes, when I'm not teaching, I can be found in the infirmary. If you're ever lonely, please do come and pay me a visit. I would love to... Spare our colleague the needless chatter, Manuela. Now then, it seems you'll be taking charge of one of the Academy's three houses. I expect you haven't yet been briefed on the nature of each, have you? Do you really not know? Fine. I'll do you a favor and explain. The Officer's Academy is comprised of three houses of students, each of which is closely affiliated with its region of origin. The Black Eagle House is for students from the Adrestian Empire. Their house leader this year is Edelgard, the Imperial Princess, who is in line to be the next Emperor. The Blue Lion House is for students from the Holy Kingdom of Fargus. Their house leader this year is Prince Dimitri. He is to be the next King of Fargus. Lastly, there is the Golden Deer House, which is for students of the Leicester Alliance. Their house leader is Claude, grandson to Duke Regan, the leader of the Alliance. To think that the next Emperor, King, and Sovereign Duke are all here. It certainly is a promising year for the Academy. I'll say. I just hope none of those little treasures cause any trouble. Hmm, quite. For now, I suggest taking a stroll around the Academy to get your bearings. And when you've a moment, please stop by my research laboratory. The old man has a point. Oh, and keep in mind that I've only notified the house leaders that you're our new professor. It's more fun that way. I suggest you try spending time with the students. Some odd ducks in that bunch, but they're good kids. I'm sure Lady Rhea will have more information for you tomorrow, but that should get you going. Good luck. You'll need it. Have you no intention of changing your mind, Rhea? Appointing a stranger, a child no less, as a professor at our esteemed academy is... I have made my decision, Sedith. I know worrying comes naturally to you, but there is truly no need. That stranger is Gerald's flesh and blood, after all. I can't say that's all too comforting. How trustworthy is this Geralt character? Is he not the man who went missing after the Great Fire 21 years ago? I would remind you that Flane is now here with us as well. I beg of you, please consider whether this is an unnecessary risk. Sadith, they have my trust. Let that be enough for you as well. More importantly, I have received a report from Shamir. I am increasingly concerned about a matter regarding our suspicious individual. We cannot ignore those who harbor ill will toward the Church, especially if they are frequenting Garrick Mach. Yes, that matter is of great importance as well. I shall continue my investigation. Rhea, for now I will have faith that you are placing your trust with the utmost care. I pray that nothing occurs to shake that confidence.
are you enjoying your time at the Academy thus far? I hope you have found our halls brimming with the vitality of well-intentioned souls. Hmm. I suppose it is time for you to take charge of one of our three houses of students. I must note that I am personally against entrusting someone as lacking in trackable history as yourself with such a task. But it is as the Archbishop desires. The Black Eagles, the Blue Lions, and the Golden Deer. All so different. I hope you've made it a point to get to know each of them. Since you are new here, we have decided to allow you first pick. Manuela and I will take charge of the remaining two houses. So you have chosen the Golden Deer led by Claude, correct? Your heart has made its choice then. All I ask is that you guide these open minds with virtue, care, and sincerity. They are all promising youths who bear the weight of Fodlin's future upon their shoulders. I hope you appreciate what an honor it is to lead them. Brother? Oh! I am so sincerely sorry. I did not mean to interrupt. I am in the middle of something, Flame. Is it urgent? No, no, it's nothing. More importantly, who is this? This is our newest professor at the Academy. Oh my! A new addition to the Officer's Academy! I am so very pleased to meet you, Professor. I am Sedith's little sister, Flame. I am so happy to make your acquaintance. Let us focus on the topic at hand. There is something you should be aware of. In a few days' time, there will be a mock battle between the three houses, intended to gauge the current progress of the students. We will be using this battle as an opportunity to ascertain your own abilities as well. Please do not disappoint the Archbishop. That is all. Wait, what? Are you really our new homeroom professor? Is that true? You aren't quite what I had pictured. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean that the way it sounded. I was sure you'd be roped into joining the Knights. Don't tell me. You chose this class just to get to know me better, right? I'm flattered, really. <laughs> Whoops. Now that you're our professor, maybe I should choose my words more carefully. Oh, well then, since we're pretty close in age and all, I suppose formalities aren't all that necessary. One must truly marvel at the exceptionality of this appointment, becoming a teacher to students almost the same age as yourself. How unusual. I've heard you are a skilled mercenary, but I cannot shake my discomfort at your new position. Are you really as strong as they say? Let's see your biceps. I bet I packed on more muscle than you. I doubt that. Apparently our new professor was personally recommended by Alois, one of the knights. As far as skill goes, I saw it with my own eyes. What's more, Teach here is the child of the most renowned former captain of the Knights of Saros. I heard. There's no way a child of the captain isn't worthy. It's simply not possible. The captain? Who are you talking about? Captain Geralt, of course. The most notable captain of the Knights of Saros and a peerless mercenary. Huh. It doesn't matter what you think of him. Captain Geralt deserves nothing but respect. Hmm. Well, after working as a mercenary alongside a father figure such as he, I have high hopes for our professor. Just because someone is special, doesn't mean their children are special too, Lysithia. Assuming that a child is going to be exceptional just because of their lineage is a bad idea. Don't you agree, Marianne? Huh? Oh, um, yes, I suppose so. Well, we can find out for ourselves in battle. I can't wait to see what tactics you've learned from the captain. A battle? Shouldn't we have a welcome party or something first? I'll get the meat. How savage. I propose a nice conversation over tea instead. I am more than willing to procure some high-quality leaves. Tea? You can't get to know someone over tea. If there's no meat involved, it's not a party. Your common sensibilities are grating to my noble ears. Please quiet yourself. Sorry for the bickering, Teach. As you can see, the Golden Deer House is a rowdy bunch. We're not especially unified. 
You'll find nobles and commoners alike here. Those who are dedicated to their studies alongside slackers. But hey, that just makes your life more exciting, right? I really hope you're looking forward to the year ahead as much as I am. Say, while you're here, I'd like to use this device I designed to determine whether the power of a crest resides within you. Won't hurt a bit. Promise. You don't know about crests? Well, allow me to tell you everything, absolutely everything, about them. Is your calendar clear? This will take a while. Crests are a fascinating topic. But before one can dive deeply into said topic, one must first understand what crests are. They are power incarnate. They are said to have been bestowed upon humans by the goddess countless ages ago. They exist within the flesh and are passed down through bloodlines. Those who carry crests may excel at magic, display exceptional strength, or any number of boons. Each crest has its own power, the nature of which is beyond mortal understanding. For now. I suspect as much, yes. But we won't know for sure unless I look into the matter. As I said, crests are passed down through the blood. However, just because someone carries a crest does not necessarily mean their descendants will inherit it as well. Only a scarce few descendants of a crest's bloodline end up inheriting that crest's power. Perhaps one of your ancestors bore a crest and you just happen to inherit it. That is how a crest usually presents itself, after all. Yes, of course. I'll get to the bottom of it straight away. Now then, please go ahead and hold out your arm over this device here. What is this? A pattern I've never seen before. Is it possible an as yet undiscovered crest has been detected? To think, there are still crests out there that even I am unaware of. How thrilling! <clears throat> Pardon my unrestrained jubilation. I have much to consider. You may leave now. I have more research to do in regard to this crest. Yes, so very much more research. But for now, your work here is done. Hmm, what could this line here be indicating? Perhaps it represents a lack of symmetry. Or perhaps, what in the world? Oh, I see. It may be connected to that, but to a greater degree than usual. Did you hear the news, Teach? Looks like we're gonna have a good old mock battle between the houses. The Golden Deer House isn't exactly what you'd call an elite group just yet, so you may want to whip everyone into shape with some extra training. After all, competition is only fun if you win. To that end, I better prepare as well. So, about the mock battle that's coming up, you don't mind me sitting it out, do you? As a fragile maiden, I'm useless in battle. I'll just cheer everyone on instead. I'm Captain Gerald's first and best apprentice. I can beat anyone, Professor. Even you, if I have to. It may have been only for a short time, but I learned from the absolute best. Goddess, I pray to thee. Please protect us. <sighs> Ugh, I really need to eat. I can't hold out until the next meal. Why can't the dining hall stay open all the time? I need to keep eating if I want to get stronger. Our house is that of the Golden Deer. Do you know the significance of that name, Professor? Golden Deer are sacred creatures said to have protected Lester since time immemorial. All three of the houses have a meaning behind their name. You should feel free to ask around if that sort of knowledge interests you. Have you memorized everyone's names yet? I'm Ignatz, in case you forgot. I'm looking forward to learning from you. Hi, Professor. Have you gotten around to visiting the library yet? 
It's absolutely loaded with valuable information. I only wish I wasn't burdened with the necessity of sleep, so I could spend all my hours there. In a manner, yes. But it's more that I want to learn as much as I possibly can. Time for a mock battle, eh? Hmm. How should we go about this? Well, you'll be our commander, that much is for sure. Just don't screw it up and everything will be great. Got it, Teach? Right, I'll do whatever I can to help too. I mean, I'm kind of obligated to. For example, if I add a little something to their food to upset their stomachs... Yeah, yeah, wink wink, I read you. You can't officially condone that sort of thing, right? But say, hypothetically speaking, students from the other houses started racing to the infirmary. As far as anyone knows, it could just be a harmless little stomach bug making the rounds. Well, well, what a fascinating conversation you two are having. May we join? Claude, I can't believe you would stoop to such crooked schemes to gain the advantage. Have you no honor? <laughs> if that was really my scheme, I wouldn't be talking about it out in the open. I'm afraid you'll have to wait until our battle to see what's really in store. It's irrelevant anyhow. Whatever you have planned won't save you from a crushing defeat. She has a point. Still, I'm rather eager to see what sort of schemes that mind of yours conjures up. You heard him, Teach. We can't let these fine folks down. <laughs> of course, a fair fight, as all fights are. Good one, Teach. Play innocent now so they won't see it coming. Oh, how precious. Looks like you and the students have become fast friends. While I am pleased that you are taking the initiative to acquaint yourself with the students, I'm afraid it's about time for the faculty strategy meeting. I'm sorry, professors. It's about time I return to my training anyway. Claude, Edelgard, until we meet again on the battlefield, farewell. I look forward to assessing your abilities. I hope you don't disappoint. So, this is the stage for the mock battle. The command's all yours, Teach. I'm sure you already understand, but the house that defeats the other two is declared the winner. Incidentally, I'll be overseeing this mock battle, so listen well if you want to win. I will fight on the front lines. I can stop the enemy's advance with grace. Do you have Lady Edelgard's permission to... I suppose I've no choice but to provide cover. Thank you, Hubert. We are off to a terrible start. Ash, can you move to the front lines? I want to lure the enemy this way. Got it, Your Highness. Leave it to me. Once you finish preparing, make your move. Did you, Mercedes? Keep our enemy occupied until then. I'm on it. Oh my! We'll try our best! Yeah! I'm the son of House Iyer. How did I fail? I must need to train harder. You fought well. Such power dwells within? Ah! Ah, so strong. Have to do better next time. It was a good try. Hmm. You are performing as expected, Professor. We will have to face you with our full might. We will use the forest to ambush our enemy. Everyone, I am counting on your support. Professor is rather strong. I suppose I'll have to call it a day. This is what I do. <laughs> Apologies, Your Highness. I can go no further. Should have trained better.
I'm all sweaty. Your princeliness. You got a thing for Edelgard, right? Come on, fess up. You'll feel better. Claude, please. This is no time for idle banter. Your defenses are wide open. That didn't get to him, huh? What a shame. I'll find a better way to ruffle him up next time. I expected as much. My training was insufficient. I am so sorry, everyone. The rest is up to you. My, my. The new professor seems very capable. I just worked harder. I don't have time for failure! Well done. I nearly wound up a patient in my own infirmary. That is that. So, you've made it past Manuela, eh? I see now I must focus and then make my move. <laughs> my goodness. The leadership of someone with actual battle experience is... Well, I was as good as useless. You fought well. I'm not setting a very good example. <laughs> Look at that, a real-life princess. I'll have to be careful not to scar that little face of yours. Careful, Claude. I'll win no matter what. But you're only making things harder for yourself. Losing hasn't even crossed your mind, has it? Ooh, this will be a bit of a shock, then. To shock was your intention to begin with, was it not? <laughs> Progress suits me well. To think that the Black Eagle House could lose so readily. All right, that's that. The winner of this mock battle is... The Golden Deer House. Great work, everyone. Even if it's just a mock battle, the taste of victory is sugary sweet. Great work, Teach. That was a brilliant win. Uh, playing ignorant as to the quality of your command and deflecting the praise to your students. You really are a model professor, Teach. To be honest, I had a bunch of other schemes planned as well, just in case the situation called for it. But I didn't have to resort to any of them. I suppose our opponents lucked out. Well met, Professor. The breadth of your skill was on full display today. I must admit that your tactics were masterful. I shudder to think what may have transpired had it been Claude leading us into battle. I noticed that too! We just did what you told us, and we won! I love it! As expected from a child of the former Captain of the Knights. Thank you for today, Professor. I have much to consider. I never doubted that our Professor would be amazing. It was way too obvious. Don't you agree, Marianne? Uh, me? Oh, um, yes, of course. Well done, Professor. Captain Gerald taught his child well. It would have been more of a surprise had our Professor proved lacking. Don't you think it's a bit harsh to give Gerald all of the credit, Leone? In any case, it's clear that we only won because of our new mentor's guidance. A mercenary's wisdom and techniques are forged in battle. Those are the sorts of things you can only learn through experience. Right, Teach? But more importantly, it's time to celebrate our victory. Teach here has yet to try my well-renowned home cooking. I really do hope you'll join us. After all, I swiped some finely aged cheese from the dining hall for just this occasion. Your work with the students was remarkable. I can see Geralt trained you well. I do hope you were able to use the occasion to bond with the students. I'm so happy to hear it. Nothing would please me more than if you used this coming year to grow closer still. 
Of course, the mock battle was mere practice. The real fight is the battle of the eagle and lion, which will take place during the wyvern moon. You are expected to properly train your students so as not to humiliate the academy during the long-held tradition that is the coming battle. As for today, I have called you here to tell you of your mission for the month ahead. Your class is to dispose of some bandits causing trouble nearby. Those affiliated with Garrig Mach Monastery have a moral obligation to help those in need, regardless of social standing. Students are no exception. Each month before the newly birthed moon departs, each house of students must complete their assigned mission. You shall work to complete the task at hand alongside your students and report back to the Archbishop before the deadline. Understood. I will soon provide you with the necessary details for your first mission. If I told you now, I expect you would only forget, and I despise repeating myself. I can sense something special within your heart. I have high hopes for you. Bandits, they say. Do you recall when we first met? You shall not fall so shamelessly again, correct? Have you no words for me? Do not tell me that you are shocked to hear from me! <laughs> you ought to know that I am always with you now. To hear my voice should not come as a shock. Whatever shall I do with you? I am alive within the confines of your heart. I am unknown to all but you. But through your eyes and ears, I see and hear. Just listen to your heart, as you are doing now, and we may speak like this. That is all that I know. this nonsense all i was told was to kill as many noble pipsqueaks as possible no one said anything about the knights of dan saros being on our trail you have proven yourself worthless distracted by something so trivial i had hoped you would achieve your goal despite the setback but now a child of the knight's former captain is in play how interesting hey this isn't what i agreed to Hiring a mercenary as a professor. What was that woman thinking? Are you listening to me? How do we finish this? You die. What? Underestimating the knights was an amateur mistake. One you will pay for. The road to eternal torment awaits you all. Now I must locate your replacements. Get back here! Damn you! 